Welcome to the Seven Figure Network Podcast, folks. My name is Melford Bibbins, and today I'm joined by Carla Pierce. And you guys know the best conversations always happen before the go button gets hit, so I apologize, but I, I did finally hit the little red button. Carla and I have been talking about so many amazing things that now we're gonna fill you guys in too. So first and foremost, Carla, thank you so much for being on today. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I appreciate the Im- invite. You know, I was um, super surprised the to get your invitation and to see that, oh my God. No stress. Listen, I'm, let me put this, I, I don't know how to put the computer on. Do, I'll put the phone on do not disturb. So then it won't disturb the computer. No biggie. Like, We're all friends here. Like, I'm sorry, guys. I didn't put my phone on do not disturb. No, <laughs> no judgment. No judgment. That just means that I am um, human and we don't get it right all the time. But I'm, the, I'm, the, so, I'm if so that, If that's not the, that, that is the center point of this podcast. We're all human. Doesn't matter if you're making seven dollars a day or seven million dollars a year. We're all human here, and and that's you know you you don't really know me too well yet. I mean, we got to spend a half an hour together meeting, but you know that's the one thing that I love about my you know our podcast and our audiences. Everybody's got to know that we're all human beings here, and we're all just trying to move forward together during a kind of a questionable time in the economy when we can all really blow things up or tuck under a rock. And and that's why I'm so excited to talk to you today because you are the anti tuck under the rock person. You are, you are the least tuck under the rock person I think I've had on the show yet. So I I'm dying to get into your story. But hey, first and foremost, Carla, tell me what actually got you into the industry in the first place. Like, why did you swipe your credit card that very first time? Um, I swiped my card the very first time because I actually received a message from the person that introduced me to the business mm-hmm. asking me to go to their website and purchase something. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I saw the price point, thought the price point was great. And I'm like, do you really think we can make money doing this? And she said, yes. And I'm like, I'm not buying anything from you. Look, sign me up. You know, it was that simple. You know, and, and what I didn't get a chance to say early was just thank you for the invitation. You know, I was super surprised to get an inbox from you. Um, not knowing you, having not hmm. connected with you and you thinking that my life or something about what I did um, based on what you saw on social media was interesting. So thank you. I see that as a compliment. So thank you for that. Oh, you, know? you you have absolutely, in this last 30 minutes that you and I have been talking, you've absolutely won me over. I am so happy. I, I'm happy for myself and for our audience that I reached out to you because you are going to, you, you've got such an amazing story and you've done so well. You know, that's the thing is it's like when you can take all the hits that you've taken and still perform at the level you're performing at and haven't slowed down. I mean, that's just insanity to me. So, so I, I, we're going to, we're going to bring the audience in. <laughs> we're we're going to stop talking around this. So, so first and foremost, tell me, you know, I know that you've had some seriously challenging health issues before, but I want to end there. I don't want to start there. So I want to talk about how did you first get started building the business when, you know, I know there's a lot of flux going on in your life, you know, the the kids, the the marriage, the everything kind of going on at the same time. What got you moving in the right direction of growth? Because I know that, I mean, basically you started because somebody invited you, but what sparked in you to realize this was going to be a path for your future? Well, the timing that I was introduced to the business, um, the company or organization that I was working for, I was working for a nonprofit nonprofit that helped underserved youth access college. Mm. They closed their doors in June. I was introduced to the business in August. And at that point, you know, having been a mortgage broker and kind of owning my my time and my schedule um, previously, I'm like, Mm, I, I don't want to go back to work for someone else. So I wanted to really push hard to make it work. Mm-hmm. And, you know, because I was self-employed before and I'm, I'm, I'm pretty organized and disciplined, I'm like, I am going to do everything that I can do in order to make it work. And I have to say, like, people look at me now and they're like, oh, she did it all. And it, and it was just so perfect. But it wasn't perfect. And it wasn't easy. Mm-hmm. You know, it took a lot of juggling because, you know, I'm a divorced mom of a very active Um, son at the time my son was in high school Mm -hmm. and he played man he's on the varsity basketball team AAU basketball you know um, the president of honor societies and other organizations so you know and he didn't drive so guess who his driver was (laughs) mom taxi (laughs) right you know so like I had to manage and balance all of that you know and still show up places sometimes and spend my time and not make any money at all you know, um, but I I just saw something and I knew that there was something there and I wanted to give it everything that I could um, to see if there was something there. Um, I thought that what I was doing was amazing. You know, what, what the company offered was amazing. And I just wanted to share it with so many other people, too. Yeah. The inspiration of what you went through health wise, 
I think is a great way to start because I think that's going to really set people's minds in the right direction for what, they, what we want them to learn on this podcast. And uh, and uh, first and foremost, I appreciate the fact that you're totally open with talking about, you know, the health things you went through, the struggles you've been through. So, so would you mind taking us from the beginning? Because I know that, uh, you know, you got hit completely out of the blue with the scariest friggin' word on the planet. I mean, when you get hit with the C word and you don't even expect it coming, it's it, it, it'll shake anybody. I don't care who you are. I don't care how strong you are. If that doesn't shake you to your core, nothing will. So would you mind doing me a favor and just let's tell that story right from the get-go. So we're in business, we're going along, and all of a sudden something weird happens and? Okay, so in the business going along, you know, seven two times seven-figure earner. Hit seven figures the say, second year. You know, everything's amazing. I ordered my dream car. That December, I'm like, I'm getting what I want. I need a truck. I'm getting it. I ordered a Lamborghini. I wanted a Lamborghini, ordered a Lamborghini truck. Life's lovely. You know, ordered the truck in December. It's going to be delivered, you know, by April of um, 2021. Well, I decided in addition to my Lamborghini, I wanted to go get a mommy makeover, right? I said, I'm going to go get nipped and tucked. So you got to get clearance in order to do that. Mm -hmm. Went to the doctor to get clearance. I've never had any health issues, no diabetes, no high blood pressure, no, no nothing. You know, the most that I had is a common cold, you know? <laughs> so um, I go to the doctors and um, I, part of the, in order to get that procedure, I had to get clearance. Mm -hmm. Well, part of the clearance included a chest x-ray. The doctor called me and I have never in my life had the doctor, and I hope I can get through this without being emotional. Mm -hmm. I never had the doctor ever call me or the nurse call me to say, the doctor needs you to come in today. So I was like, okay, doctor said come in today. Yeah. I'm like, okay. <laughs> like I never imagined what they were going to tell me. Oh. Cancer does not run in my family. I, I don't, I've never smoked a day in my life. So I get to the doctor's office. And the doctor tells me they found a mass. So it's still not registering to me. Right. We found a mass in your upper right lung. I'm like, okay, a mass. I can't even relate to what a mass is because right. I've never dealt with cancer. Mm -hmm. Never had anybody close with me deal with cancer. And he told me that it was cancer. So I'm like, how? I never asked why, but I'm like, how? Like, how can this happen? Mm -hmm. So I came home, I called my sister and my nephew, who are the people I'm closest to. And, you know, I, I told them what the doctor said and, you know, they're blown away. And honestly, we were all very scared. Yeah. We were scared. Like I'm a pillar, you know, in our family, you know, a pillar and a pillar of strength. Right. You know, so um, I had my moment mm -hmm. and I woke up the next day and I said, I text them both and I said, God gives his greatest battles to his strongest soldiers. I am a strong soldier and I'm going to beat this. I'm oh. going to beat it. Period. Cancer is not going to beat me. I'm going to beat cancer. Yeah. And I said, moving forward, I'm like, we're going to have our moment. I said, but we're going to move forward and we're going to speak life. You know, we're going to move forward knowing that the end result is that cancer can't live in my body anymore. Mm. We're going to speak positively when you contact me. You know, I don't want people contacting me, asking me how I feel every single day. I want people praying for me, sending me inspiration, sending me jokes. And that's how I train people to talk to me. I didn't, I, I would not let anybody call me and say, how are you feeling? What's wrong? I, I didn't allow that. You know, I, I listen to motivation, inspiration every single day. I listen to sermons. You know, I listen to music because music is the thing that just lifts me up. And um, let's say, I, I, you know, well, I'm planning on letting the tears fall. Oh, I don't blame you <laughs> one bit. <laughs> Find a napkin in here somewhere. <laughs> but, you know, God is amazing. Fast forward to now. Um, I went through chemo radiation and surgery, you know, which is a lot. All cancer patients don't go through all three of those, Ugh. you know, and my chemo was so rough. I was like, come on surgery, come on surgery, not knowing that surgery was going to knock me on my behind in a way that I could never imagine. I am very independent. I am a very strong person. I'm a very strong will person. Cancer knocked me on my behind. 
Chemo was awful. I, I couldn't keep anything down. I couldn't smell anything. Everything made me sick. So I was like, please no more chemo. Please no more chemo. So, you know, the, the radiation, the, the radiation shrunk the mask small enough so that they could go in and cut it out. Mm -hmm. So when I had, I was looking forward to the surgery until I had the surgery. And after surgery, I couldn't walk and talk because oh. my lung, you know, you need your lung, you know, the, right. Use our everything. Lungs, right? <laughs> everything. And then when they went in, it was supposed to be a three hour surgery, a three hour surgery that ended up being an almost seven hour surgery. Wow. I started wow. hemorrhaging. Oh. They, they went in robotically and they thought they were going to go in robotically and take it out. I started hemorrhaging during the surgery. My surgery took seven hours. I came out of sur surgery and I was in ICU for two days in the hospital for two weeks. Wow. Two weeks because they had to get me strong enough where I could at least, you know, like walk and, 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 and talk. Yeah. I had to push my voice out. It's not like I couldn't say anything, but it was very difficult and it was very mm -hmm. difficult for people to understand me, yeah. you know? So, um, I had 24 hour nurses when mm -hmm. I left the hospital and this is not even something that I even, you know, have shared or even talk about, but I came home from the hospital in an ambulance. I didn't come home from the hospital in a car oh, because wow. I couldn't, I couldn't sit up. Oh. I couldn't sit up in a car, you know, so um, ambulance to, um, delivered me to my nurses who, you know, took very good care of me mm -hmm. and, um, and, and got me stronger. Mm -hmm. I had to have physical therapy, occupational therapy, you know, some of the basic things that people take for granted that I took for granted every single day, I had to learn how to do again. Mm -hmm. um, I couldn't sleep in my bed. And a lot of people don't know this. I'm, I'm on Zoom calls, you know, still working with my team. Even mm -hmm. when I couldn't talk good, I was still on those Zoom calls listening, you know, mm -hmm. and when I could try to say something I would and they would be like Carla stop talking we don't want you to talk stop talking right you know but I wanted to encourage them to just keep going you know keep going because here's the reality had it not been for me getting involved in my network marketing business and going hard and putting my foot on the gas mm -hmm. and not stopping a, I wouldn't have the money to pay for that elective surgery that allowed me to find the cancer that saved my life mm -hmm. I was stage 3A. I was stage 3A. I was stage one, stage 3A. The stage 3A, 3B, and then four. Whew. So um, I'm grateful for all of that. And I'm grateful for my business because it allowed me to have the finances that, that I needed yeah. to take care and pay for my ridiculously expensive um, uh medical um expenses yeah. but the thing that put, that made me go was my business it mm -hmm. gave me purpose helping other people gives me purpose yeah. it helps me to know i got to show up because i know you know that there are other people counting on me to just show up and be there yeah. and not in a way that um it was stressful at all because i love helping people i mm -hmm. love helping people yeah. i help people for free Yep. You know, and, mm -hmm. and when I worked for the nonprofit and helping those students to get to college and access college, I thought that I loved helping students. Mm -hmm. But then I realized I just like helping people. Yeah. I love helping people to achieve their goals and their dreams. And I love to help people with this right here. Mm -hmm. Mindset is everything. Amen. And my mindset is what helped me to kick cancers behind. Yep. Look, I'm 99% cancer free, according to my doctor, 99, <laughs> that other 1%, you know, but it's mindset, you know, just believing and getting people to mm -hmm. believe bigger. Like even my customers, I get my customers to believe bigger because if we believe then nothing is impossible. But in order to believe, you got to shift your mindset. In order, in order to believe, you got to get rid of the stinking thinking. Yes. A lot of people got stinking thinking. They mm -hmm. want something, but their language does not allow them to speak the things yeah. that they need to speak in order for those things to manifest. How did you keep your team 
from getting the stinking thinking when they found out that you're going to be. And again, you you got back in the game as fast as humanly. I mean, you got back in the game way too fast. Probably your your doctor was probably mad at you <laughs> for not recovering the way you should have. This is, this is my PT. That's what I said. This is my physical therapy. <laughs> Would you please relax, PT. Carla? <laughs> Stop teaching people. But so so, how did you keep your team positive? Because I mean, let's let's all be honest with each other here. We're all big boys and girls. When you find out that your leader that you love so much and has taught you so much is going through this experience, it's really easy for morale for the whole team to drop down. So how did you keep morale? I mean, did they, did they, uh, did they raise themselves? Did you try and get back in there again? Like, how did you keep everybody moving in the right direction when you should have been and, and kind of were completely sidelined? So one of the things that I did, I didn't tell them. So at oh, first they didn't know. Really, They did not know. I wow. did not tell them. I told them because I was invited to speak on an, on a huge stage um, to share my story mm-hmm. at um, a, another um, huge network marketing event. Okay. And I knew that they were going to see it. Mm-hmm. Yep. So I did not want them to find out on stage what I was dealing Good with. For you. Yep. So I had been dealing with this for months. I was speaking on stage in May. I found out in early, in early 2021 that I had cancer. So I'm going through chemo and radiation. In my first several rounds of chemo, I was good. It Mm -hmm. didn't affect me. It did not affect me. But as it went on, OMG, that's when it got really tough. So even by the time I spoke on stage, the chemo hadn't started. It was kicking my butt, but it wasn't as bad. You know, like (laughs) I, I got to a place like right after I spoke on stage where Every cent bothered me. I couldn't eat anything. I could not drink water without bringing it back up. Everything caused me to throw up, like everything, every single thing, right? So with my team, um, I'm the um, second highest rank in our company, right? So uh, during that time frame, I qualified because to get to that the highest rank, you got to qualify two months in a row. So I qualified one month. Right. And then the second month, I'm like, I'm not telling them. I'm like, anybody else probably would have told them. But I'm like, I'm not going to tell them because Mm -hmm. I want to qualify because I qualify. Don't want to qualify because anybody is having any kind of sympathy or empathy for where I am and what I have going on. And, you know, I didn't tell them, you know, we kept pushing. I kept encouraging them. You know, I had different trainings and and, and, um, things of that sort on my page to Mm -hmm. make sure that they could keep pushing and and, and going. And when I finally told them, they were blown away that I had been dealing with this all this time and never I did. I mean, you know. can, you, can you imagine hearing that out of the blue? I mean, yeah, I, you were living it, but I mean, t- take your brain out for one second and imagine putting it in somebody else's head and all of a sudden they find out that their mentor, the person that they look up to more than most other folks in the world, A, is going through this, but B, was tough enough not to cry about it was, you know, just drove and, and pursued. I mean, that's, that's incredible. Your, your team, they, they got to be, a, I mean, A, they got to be the most supportive human beings on the planet, but B, they got to be as tough as you are because they made it through this and, and didn't, I mean, it would have been so easy for them to disconnect. I talked to them about mindset though. I told them when I, I told them I went live on Facebook so they could see me and see my face. And I said, listen, you know, like, I know that I'm going to beat this. Yeah. You know, and what I need you all to do, you can pray, just like I said, pray, send me inspiration, send me funny jokes, Mm -hmm. you know, but what you cannot do is worry because to me, prayer and worry, you can't, why worry if you're going to pray? They don't go together, Mm -hmm. you know, just like positive and negative, like we're going to stay positive because I know I'm going to beat it. Yeah. You know, and and they took that on too, and they're like, okay, Carla, we're rallying with you, you know, and they stayed strong with me throughout. I mean, when I say they showered me with a bunch of, I'm like, every day it was so amazing. Every day, I'm flowers and edible arrangements, and and oh, she's she can't get out of her bed. Let me send her a bed tray. I mean, it was you know, they were so incredibly amazing to me. That's awesome. It was so immensely, uh, incredibly amazing to me. Yeah. You know, so. It, it it was it was awesome, you know, and they they just stayed strong. And I'm like, listen, what you all can do for me is push to hit your goals. What mm-hmm. you all can do for me is push to keep the product in front of more people. Yeah. You know, when you win, that's going to push me to get stronger and be better. What a you lesson. Know, so. it's such a wonderful lesson. I'm so glad everybody got to hear that. I, I want to shift gears for a second because, you know, we're, we're joking before we started recording. We got a lot in common and it's, uh, you know, we both lived in New England growing up. 
you know, we both live down south now. So, so I want to ask you, what is the difference between selling in New England versus selling down south? Because because you and I are New Englanders, and we know that we're, we're a very special breed, us New Englanders, and and Southerners are actually a very different breed too. So, can, can you talk about a little bit about that? Is you know the difference between selling up north compared to selling down south? People up north are um, are very are more cut and dry. You know, like they're more cut and dry. They're a lot more direct. <laughs> you know, um, and they cut to the chase. <laughs> You know, um, more so, I, I feel than people in the South. You know, yeah. so that that is definitely uh, one thing that is uh, that's a little bit different. Mm-hmm. And you know, there there is a different warmth, honestly. You know, um, with the people in the South than there is with with people up north. You know, from what I found. Mm-hmm. Have you done a lot of building up north, or have you stuck uh, in the Southern region a lot more? No, I went. Home. Yeah, I went home too. So I also lived in Maryland for twenty three years. I went to college oh. in Maryland. So everywhere um, that I have history, mm-hmm. I have nice size teams. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. I, I went back home and I, I built there too. Mm-hmm. So how are you actually building now? So let's talk about today because we, you know, you, you, you got past your challenges of the, of the past. We still have the little 1%, but we're going to knock that out. I'm not even worried about it. I'm, I'm, I'm knocking that little 1% out of here. But how are things going for you today? What is the, you know, because now, you know, not only do you, have you endured your health challenges and, and beat them, but you've had the challenges of, you know, COVID and lockdown and all the other weirdness that's gone on. And especially with somebody in your business where, you know, accessories are something that a lot of folks want to touch, want to feel. And I know you've been so smart about not restricting yourself to that. Can, can you tell, you know, one, two or three tips that are working today for you and your team? The one thing I got to say that I didn't say earlier, oh, please. Is, uh, the love and support that I received from, of course, my family, you know, my family was right there with me yeah. and the family that I yeah. um, developed and created mm-hmm. within the business. Yeah. Priceless. Yes. Those were things that helped me to move forward. There, yeah. The love was real. The support was real. Mm-hmm. You know, it was amazing. You know, it was an extended family. And I mm-hmm. loved that aspect. That's one of the things that I love so much about, you know, my team, you know, mm-hmm. especially, you know, and our business, you know, so, so those things, you know, those things are, are, are important. You're, you're very lucky that you got love from the family that you were given and the family you chose. Thank you. That's not, that's not always, that, that's, that's a, that's a hard combination to put together sometimes, but, but it proves who you are because the family you chose supported you when the time came due, you know, mm-hmm. it uh, would have been, would have been easy for them to take a step back. Instead, they leaned in. So I, I, I so appreciate it. And I want to meet more members of your team. I'm trying to meet this crowd because, because they got to be just incredible. So, so anyways, uh, can we get back to what are, you know, what's working for you today? It just, you know, one, two, three, however many tips you want to give. Um, you know, I know that people have seen your fortitude, your drive, your ability to be an amazing leader. I'd love to know, you know, what's actually getting enrollments in this environment today? Showing up, show up, because you have to show up to go up, period, point blank and period, you Mm -hmm. know, and that's one of the things that I committed to doing, Mm -hmm. you know, I believe in showing up, you know, and leading from the front and the only way to do it is to do it. You know, so I've been showing up like more than I have in a long, long, long time. You know, I thought back to, you know, how is it? How is it that you got to to where you are? Like, what were you doing? And I went back to those things because I believe in, you know, going back to the basics, the basics, the fundamentals is going to get you where you got to go all day long. I believe strongly, you know, that that consistency beat skill every day of the week. Mm-hmm. You know, so I decided that I was going to show up in my business and be more consistent than I ever have. Mm-hmm. And that's what I've been doing. And as a result of that, you know, I actually just added a, a new business partner yesterday, but and it's a, as a result of showing up and being consistent mm-hmm. with a positive attitude, yes. with a positive mindset. Mm-hmm. You know, because mindset is everything. You know, I listen to, as I mentioned, you know, I listen to a lot of um, when we were talking. I listen to a lot of YouTube's. I listen to a, a lot of um, motivation, and I don't watch. I, I mean, you know, to each his own. You know, but I really, I don't watch TV. I listen to YouTube's. I listen to things that are going to help motivate me and drive me mm-hmm. uh, to success and to securing uh, the things that I want to secure for myself and my family. Mm-hmm. I work a lot with people, and I talk to them a lot about mindset. 
Because if you mind your business, you know, if you mind your business and you mind the business that pays you, it will pay you. And in minding that business, you know, you got to focus on your mindset so that you can manifest the money that you want to make in your business. Yeah. You know, those are my M's, you know, for the M in mindset. And, um, and, and I just truly, truly believe that, you know, everything is how you see it. If you see a glass half full, it's going to be half full. If you see it half empty, you're going to see it half empty. It's going to be half empty, you know, so got to see the glass is half full. And that's what I try to surround myself with. Those are the type of people I try to surround myself with. And that's what I try to encourage people to do. Even mm-hmm. if they encounter me briefly, you know, I want that encounter to be a positive encounter. Yeah. You know, I want them to walk away like, oh my gosh, she's a, uh, a breath of fresh air. Or I learned something from her, you know, by watching her. And, I and, and I believe that as leaders, if you lead from the front, if you walk it like you talk it, and if you show people how to do it, then they can do it. I, I think that when you're leading people, they're a lot like children. I'm not calling people children. Let me be no, clear. I'm not calling we people children. No, we but people... And, and and children, like when you're raising kids, mm-hmm. they're not going to do what we tell them to do. Mm-hmm. They, they do what they see us do. Yes. So if they see us doing the fundamentals and those basics every day, then mm-hmm. they're going to do those fundamentals and basics every day. And then everyone wins. Yeah. You know, so um, I, I believe big in, like I said, in consistency mindset and, and, and showing up for the win. And when you're showing up for the win, you got to think right. Mm-hmm. Can you can you de- can you define showing up for me? Is that going live every day on Facebook? Is that sending out messages? Like what what do you consider showing up? Oh my God, showing up every which way you can. Um, showing up means going live on on Facebook consistently, mm-hmm. and I go live now almost every day, multiple mm-hmm. times a day. Yeah. Um, I, I believe showing up means creating reels. You know, mm-hmm. uh, mm-hmm. we've been taught that reels and video is the way to go. Yes. So, you know, there are some people that are still stuck and they want to do things the old school way and old school is good. You know, and when you want to go back to the fundamentals Mm -hmm. on the basics, but if we're hearing and and that and we're being taught, you know, that reels and video are the way then you got to create video and reels. I create video and reels every single day. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm constantly creating new content. I'm showing up in such a way that you cannot help but to see me. Mm -hmm. Carla, are you using a whole bunch of different platforms? Because you said Reels, which I assume it's Instagram, and you're Mm -hmm. using Facebook Lives. Are are those your two main, like, what what are the platforms that are working best for you nowadays? Everybody's always got that question. My main platform uh, and where I made my millions is on Facebook. Facebook is my main, but Mm -hmm. um, Instagram and TikTok, Facebook and Facebook, Instagram and TikTok. The three of those. Yeah. How is TikTok? It's like, I'm, it's, I'm, I'm almost asking for myself as much as anything else. Like, how, how is TikTok working for you? Are you, you know, are you doing the dancing thing? Are you like, are, are you, because we keep hearing, you know, you got to stick with the trends. You got to use the trendy music. You got to do the pointy thing and all that kind of stuff. Are you doing that? Or are you just on there teaching and being you? Which, which is converting better for you? So um, once a week, you know, I, I go on and I, I have a, um, a talk that I do once a week on um, TikTok. Mm. Instagram and Facebook, and it's called Mind Your Business Mondays. Ooh, you know, cool. so I do that every Monday. Mm-hmm. And on TikTok, I really use TikTok to create my content. Ah. So I create my reel in TikTok. I put all the fancy smancy music on there. If I want to put stickers and words on there, I do it in TikTok. So I mastered how to do it there. And mm-hmm. then I take that reel, I download it um, to an app. I copy the link to an app that takes the TikTok logo off. Right. Can you tell us that app so everybody can have it? Um, it's, uh, it's called Repost Tick. Repost Tick. Thank Repost you. Repost Tick. Write it down. And, and, it's, and it's Tick Repost. Like the, it's one is inverted on the Android. So okay. for I, iPhone is Repost Tick. And it's like a, a reddish and kind of turquoise. Like it has a little... Um, the, the little banner that allows you to save things. I can show you, show you what it looks like. Um, the, the repost tick app. So I take the TikTok logo off there. Tick save. I said it wrong. So it's tick save. So it's, um, tick save. I don't know if you can see my phone. I had a couple of things up, but it's tick save. It's that oh, beautiful. Right there. Great. Thank yeah. you. So then the other one is save tick. So iPhone is tick save. And for the Android, Android it's save tick. So it's invert, it's inverted. Gotcha. But, um, and it's really simple. You copy the link, 
takes the logo off of there. And then I use that same video as content for Instagram and for Facebook. And I wow. upload the reel to both. What a great tip. Hey, th- thank you for that platinum nugget. I mean, it's like, you know, we, we've been doing nothing but giving value. <laughs> and I love that. But we've been talking about a lot of high level stuff, which, you know, obviously that's an incredibly important part of it. But, you know, I love when we can give people, you know, what to do today. And tick save is an amazing thing because, you know, it's that's the thing that I see about TikTok. And, and I hate to say, it, but one of the things that kind of keeps me off it is there's so much you can do on there. You can you can just, you know, do so much to your content on there. I didn't even think about the fact that you build your content in that amazing universe and then just pull off the logo. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah, I love yeah, that's it. That's what I do. I mean, and, you know, I'm not I don't consider myself to be a huge techie, mm-hmm. you know, but like. Like I learned how to do something technical. So now I'm having fun learning how to do more and adding more to it. So, you know, like I I just think that it's great when you can create fun around whatever it is that you're doing too, Mm -hmm. you know, and I know that it's going to get to the point where I'm going to have to get help with some of the things that I do. But the cool thing about it, you know, as a leader is when you know how to do it, you know, before you pay somebody else to assist you, Mm -hmm. you know what you're paying for. You know how long it takes, you know what it takes to do it. So you know whether or not when you're paying someone, whether or not you're getting the value that you deserve Mm -hmm. and whether or not you're overpaying. Yeah, great. um, You know, for that product or service. Because, you know, you start making money, then, you know, people come out of everywhere and you don't necessarily always get what you pay for. Yeah. No, it's so such, when you know how to do it yourself, then you know, I know how long it takes to do this. So yeah. don't try to charge me a million dollars when, <laughs> you know, it, it it took five dollars for you to, right. to <laughs> yeah. give it to me. Oh, that's great. Thank you. That's another great tip. When you're hiring out, make sure you know how to do it yourself and make sure you're not getting overcharged. I love it. So do me a favor and tell me if somebody started today, so somebody just swiped their credit card for the first time on your team, what are the first one, two or three things that you would do to tell them? to start their business right now? What, what would be your first three tips? Um, to let everyone know that this is what you're doing. Like, don't operate in a closet. Let mm-hmm. folks know around you what you're doing. Because sometimes when people operate in a closet, they don't let people know what they're doing. Mm-hmm. The people that they know and love that are close to them end up joining someone else or joining another business similar because you didn't let them know that this is what you do. So I um, encourage them to send out a message to their network, letting them know, like, look, you know, I just got started. You know, please support me in any which way you can. And share that same message on mm-hmm. social media platforms, mm-hmm. you know, and then I encourage them to get familiar with what our system looks like, you know, and the thing that they need to do every day, like to place orders and um, mm-hmm. things of that sort. So we log in and I make sure that they know how to get in there, excuse me, through our app, you know, and through our browser. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I also always encourage people to have fun with it, yeah. you know, have fun with it. And I sit down with them. And I'm like, look, what is your commitment? How many hours do you want to dedicate to your business? Because I can't answer that. Yep. And, the, and, the, and the answer for that is different with everybody. And, you know, once they tell me what that is, I find out their why in that first conversation. Mm-hmm. Because if they tell me their why, and they're watching those sitcoms every every day of the week, <laughs> Okay. And they're getting headaches every day of the week because Mm -hmm. they they can't do it because they got a headache. They can't do it because they broke a toenail. You know, I remind them of their why. And I remind them of their commitment. You know, what they said, this is not what I made up. This is what you said you were going to do. And, um, you know, kind of, you know, brings them back in and keeps them focused on what it is that they need to do. I am very, very, very big on DMOs, daily method of operation. If you have a daily method of operation that includes IPOs, you know, which are income producing activities, Mm -hmm. uh, IPA, excuse me, you know, which are income producing activities, you're going to win. Mm-hmm. You know, you're going to win yeah. and you're going to you're going to slay the day, you know, yeah. but you have to be intentional about winning and being intentional about winning is making sure, again, that your daily method of operation includes the level of activities, mm-hmm. you know, whether mm-hmm. that is posting so many reels, posting so many pictures, you know, going live however many times, you know, so that your business is visible. When yeah. you look at the big companies, those companies are big because they're visible. Yeah, well put. Well put. So speaking of visibility, you, you put the ball in the tee for me. Uh, mm-hmm. How can folks reach out to you? I, I want you, because you, you, you talked about a couple different platforms. What is the best way for people to be able to contact you directly? The best way for people to contact me directly, um, 
Carla Neal Pierce on any platform, Carla Neal Pierce on Facebook, Carla Neal Pierce on Instagram, Carla Neal Pierce on TikTok, you know, and I'll, I'll, I do have a website, you know, CarlaNealPierce.com, but my social media platforms, like my hand, my, my phone stays in my hand. So where are you going to get me best on one of my social media platforms? You know, wow. probably um, I, I spend the most time on Facebook. I do. I spend yeah. the most time on Facebook mm -hmm. and it's kind of just because I'm a creature of habit. Like that's where I started. That's where I made, um, you know, the, the most money. So that's where I, I typically stay. Amen. Ne never walk away from the place that's making you the most money. That's a, I mean, if, 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 that, if they, if they forget everything else we taught them, <laughs> remember that one tip. So, Hey, Carla, I'm so, I so appreciate what you've done for us today. I got to ask you my final and favorite question. What is your six month goal? My six month goal is to really get back into the grind, you know, to increase my sales. Like I, um, my goal is to hit six figures in sales, you know, by the end of our company year, mm -hmm. you know, so I'm, I'm grinding to show up to do that. And my immediate goal, I, I, like I said, I spent a lot of money in medical bills. My um, monthly chemotherapy appointments initially were $33,000 a month and my insurance company didn't pay it. So I had to pay it. Yeah. Um, once I got better insurance, you know, it was seventeen five. dollars Still a lot of money, a lot lower, still a lot of money. So mm -hmm. uh, my goal is to pay, all, pay back all the money that I spent in medical bills mm -hmm. Through sales only, not touching, not nothing to do with my commission, but mm -hmm. just in um in product sales only. So, Brilliant. Um, so that that's my immediate goal. So I'm pushing to do that and hoping that I can secure the bag and get and and do um six figures in sales in a month. Yeah. You know, and um by the end of the year, and then I and in order to do that, I know I have to show up differently. You know, my grind and grit has to look a whole lot different. I got to be more visible. <laughs> right. Oh man. It's uh, I, I, I'm so proud of what you've done, the recovery you've made, the team you've built. And and thank you so much for everything you've delivered today. It's just been fantastic. So, Carla, thanks again for being on today. It was a fantastic interview. I really appreciate it. And I can't wait until we talk again. Thank you. Thank you. And I have one more tip for you. Can I give Please. you one more tip? I would so, love it. So my one more tip is as leaders, you know, as leaders are growing into leadership and they're getting new people on their team, you know, just to focus on always working on their business and doing the things that help them to to even attract people that allow them to become a leader, yeah. you know, so, you know, in, in, in doing that, don't think you got to take your foot off the gas to start managing people because mm. we're all independent consultants. We're not managers. You know, so just focus on your business always, you know, 70 to 80 percent of your time should be focused on your business. And that other, you know, um, 20 to 30 percent of the time should be focused on helping other people develop their business. So that's it. That's my the, last. Tip. <laughs> the, the, the P.S. again <laughs> was so good that even if everybody forgets the rest of this interview, that P.S. alone was worth their time to talk to us. So again, Carla, thanks so much for being on today. I really appreciate it. You did great. Thank you. Thank you for reaching out. God bless. Have an amazing day. Thank you. Thanks. Again. You too. Right, bye, -bye. bye bye. Hey there. I hope you really enjoyed the show. And now I have a question to ask. Do you want to know how to build a seven figure network with just three to five enrollments a month? That's just three to five conversations, not 30 to 50. That means we only have to convince three to five people to say yes to build a real seven-figure network. Scan the code or click the link at the bottom of this page now to discover the step-by-step -step method for exactly how you can add hundreds, if not thousands of customers to your downline by recruiting and enrolling businesses and health professionals onto your team that have hundreds of built-in customers that need your product or opportunity. Get the Seven Figure Network book now and let's start building massive volume with an enormous downline of businesses, health professionals, and customers.